Hello, here we are with an unboxing of the Nikon Coolpix S800C digital camera. It's an unusual unboxing for us here at Clove Technology, uh, but the reason we're interested in this camera is because of this. Android technology. It's a dedicated compact camera but it's running the Android operating system instead of a uh, sort of standard camera interface that the likes of Nikon would uh, produce themselves. So there's going to give a whole host of features that we wouldn't normally have. So it's a 16 megapixel camera with 10 times uh, zoom. We've got built-in GPS and Wi-Fi. We've got the Android on board. It's Android version 2.3. We've got HDMI on board as well. In the box, we should get a strap, a rechargeable battery, an AC adapter, USB cable, user manual, and warranty. So without further ado, let's unbox this. Now this is the black colored unit. So here's the quick start guide, quite a thick guide in a variety of languages in black and white there. We've then got warranty informations, declaration of conformity, service warranty and then in here we've got the main components so we've got a three pin UK mains adapter which will connect onto a power brick which we'll come to in a moment we've got the battery a fairly small battery with 1050 milliamp hour capacity We've then got a USB cable, so this will connect to the mains adapter or a computer. And on the other end, we've got the proprietary connection here uh, that connects to the camera itself. We've then got a little uh, lanyard wrist strap that will connect to the camera, uh, makes for easy transportation. We've got the camera itself, which we'll come back to in a moment. And then lastly, in here is a European power adapter and that's got a USB port on it so you connect the provided USB cable you open that up and you connect the three pin mains adapter like that to it and you can use that then for charging in the UK so here we are with the camera as you can see, initial impressions make it look like a standard compact camera. Of course, it's very different because it's got the Android on board. So taking a look from the front, we've got the sort of Nikon branding on here. We've got this powered by Android, that it's got a 16 megapixel backlit uh, sensor. We've got 10 times zoom. We've got Wi-Fi and GPS on here. Records in full HD, as you can see down here. So here's the zoom lens. Now, I'm not going to profess to be some expert on camera uh, technology. Technology. If you want the full detailed specs, you need to head over to the Nikon website. Um, you've got flash up here, you've got microphones and a light sensor. On the bottom, we've got a speaker grill here. We've got a quarter inch uh, tripod mount. We've then got a piece we can open up here, and this is where we can pop in the battery and the memory card. So we pop the battery in like so and the memory card will go there now it supports uh, sdhc cards not sd uh, xc which is a shame considering this is a state-of-the-art uh, camera it does have some inbuilt memory you've got about 1.7 gig uh, available to you uh, once the os has taken up some of the other bits etc on the side here we've then got the lanyard strap we've got the hdmi connector here for connecting up to a display. And then we've got a cover over the port for the uh, charger slash USB cable for uh, connecting it to a computer. And then on the other side, it's flush with the exception of a screw. And on the top, we've then got the cool picks, the Wi-Fi, the GPS, the power button, the shutter button, and the zoom controls. So feels like a sort of slightly bigger compact camera, quite nice. On the back here then we've got a 3.5 inch touchscreen uh, OLED display. We've got the back home and menu keys synonymous with Android. So we're powering this on and the first time boot will take a little bit longer than uh, normal. 
and we're going to have to run through the Android setup on here. So this does have 1080p, it's got GPS and Wi-Fi, you can download apps and things for actually sharing your content straight from the camera. It's got panorama, uh, vibration, reduction, anti-blur, continuous shooting mode. So here we are, ready to set it up. You can see the screen orientates in portrait and landscape, so you can use it however you prefer. You can change your language options. You've got quite a few different languages there. Let's go through the setup. So let's uh, start by connecting to Wi-Fi. So uh, it's just gonna then search for uh, Wi-Fi that we have here. So it's picked it up. We're just gonna put in the uh, password and get set up. Okay, so we're connected up to the wireless now. Skip through to the next section, and we could uh, sign in with our Google account here. So uh, without further ado, let's actually uh, sign in. So we're logging into the Google account here. You can uh, decide whether you want uh, location-based results and uh, whether you want uh, anonymous data to be collected, Go next, whether you want to uh, restore your device from your Google account, etc. click next. And then we can finish setup. You can see how this is uh, lacking in some areas already. It's now linked to this phone. Well, it's actually a camera, isn't it? Um, there's no phone functionality on here. We can set the date and time. Let's just skip through and get straight in. So let's just zoom in so you can see the uh, screen a little bit better here. So we've got these home screens which we can flick through and like an Android device we can press and hold and we can customize the wallpapers um, on here if we choose. So we've got the personalization options. There's not much of a skin on here in you know there's very little addition that uh, Nikon have actually made to this uh, camera. Let's start with one of these shortcuts. We've got the browser uh, makes sense to go straight through here and show you this. Now, not that we're gonna actually demonstrate this right now, but if you are taking pictures on the device here, because we're connecting to the internet and browsing the web, you could upload your pictures to sort of anywhere because you're using a web browser. So um, be it Flickr or other services like that, you can uh, go through and upload photos with ease right from uh, this device. Now it'd be nice if you had 3G uh, on board, but there's loads of Wi-Fi networks around, so you're not exactly limited. Now here we are at the um, full Clove website. You can scroll through it, you can double tap in, you can zoom with pinch and zoom. So there isn't really any restrictions on what you can do uh, on this device in terms of web browsing, it's just a smaller screen to actually do it on. You can go into your menu and you've got your normal sort of settings that you'd have, so you can have new windows if you want. We go back home here. Let's go into the settings. Now we we'll scroll through to show you about the device. So you can see Coolpix S800C running Android version 2.3.3. Whether Nikon goes the effort of updating it uh, to later versions uh, is yet to be seen. We doubt it. You've got language options here. If you have a preferred language, you can see the amount of storage. You can uh, control things such as sound, the display, including the brightness and whether it rotates. So you've got a phone ringtone here. Um, not sure really what you can do with that because it's not actually going to ring. Um, wireless and network controls and that's already a bit of a downside. I know Android is customizable and designed for phones but you'd think that Nikon could uh, have at least taken out some of those shortcuts. We've got the app tray here that we can go through and we've got um, things like email, uh, we've got Google Plus on here, we've got Maps, we've got navigation, Google search, we've got the Play Shop. So all of those things are here. You've got YouTube, so you could go and watch uh, a video actually on YouTube. So let's actually just click one of these videos and play it over Wi-Fi here. So it's not actually that bad. Um, the screen's okay, the light may not reflect 
sit uh, here on the camera very well, but where I'm sat, it's not actually too bad at all. You could quite happily watch something back on that screen, maybe not for a prolonged period of time. So you've got all of that functionality uh, there. You've also got uh, a number of shortcuts that Nikon have added themselves, and you've got uh, shortcuts on the home screen. So we'll go to shooting and play in a moment, but you've got upload, and you can connect this to um, some services that Nikon have on here. So a smart device where you can uh, basically play it back to a um, television or display that allows you to uh, hook this up or s along those sort of lines. Now we don't have one in range uh, that we can uh, demonstrate that with. So if we go back to the home screen, as you can actually notice these uh, do orientate in portrait and landscape as well. You've got play and this will play back uh, photos they actually have on the device but we have none at the moment. We go back we can then go into shooting and this is the camera itself. Now we've got to admit we've had a little bit of a play around with this already and um, some things are fairly simple. It's a shame that there are some limitations around the camera and not as many features as you'd expect to see in a camera um, of this sort of expense. This comes in at well over the 300, 350 pound mark. Um, and there are some limitations and things that we would have liked to have sort of seen more controls over what you can do. So here on the display, we've got uh, exposure controls got macro settings, we've got a timer. So a simple one here is you can't actually set how long you want the timer to be. You've just got this fixed 10 or two seconds. It'd be nice to control that a bit more. Uh, flash modes, sort of auto or off. You've got uh, the settings down over here where you can go into the different shooting modes to give you a little bit more option, including scenes. And then you can scroll through these different ones here. So that's kind of helpful. As you can see, you've got panorama, black and white. So there's some options there to help increase the capabilities that you have with this camera, but it's not extensive. Um, you've got special effects that you can add to it. Uh, but again, there's not really many options there in terms of special effects. Your cheap camera now will have more effects than that. Um, smart portrait option there to help uh, detect uh, faces. So of course we've got movie option as well that we can click into here and we've got uh, options again around the settings on the movie. We can click menu and get a few more settings this way including the uh, resolution. So you've got a variety of resolutions there. Whether it's autofocus, noise reduction. Be nice to actually see an option to actually turn the microphone off completely uh, with video recording. Um, you've got the touch screen option whether you have this on or off. So you've got the shutter button on the top, but you can also use the touch screen. So you may want to switch that off if you just want to use the dedicated shutter button on the top there. So let's just go back to the camera. And again, you've got some more options by pressing the menu button in the camera. And then setup takes you into some of the settings here, including um, print date, vibration reduction, autofocus, digital sh zoom, shutter, HDMI, GPS. So there's some options there. Um, some again would say somewhat limited. And then you can just take your pictures like so. Now close up here and it's got the flash on so they're not going to be great results necessarily. But it's fairly quick and responsive. If we were to go back to the home screen, the uh, lens closes. Now you'd like to just press the shutter button and go straight into the camera. You can't. You actually have to uh, press the camera icon on the back here. And one of the things we haven't really got to grips with um, yet is whilst you've got to do it like that, you can press the home key and it closes again. Um, sort of the power down options, you've got the power button on the top. If you press it for a couple of seconds like you would an Android device, it sort of turns itself uh, off and it takes a few seconds to sort of do that. So you can see the green light is pulsating uh, there on the top. But whilst it's doing that, I'm pressing the shutter button, I'm getting no response. 
I could press the power button again and I'm like just a quick press is getting nothing so if I wanted to take a quick photo um, I haven't really got that option um, straight away now once the green light has stopped flashing we're okay we can press the power button quickly and we're back up and running and the uh, lens has come out and we're straight into shooting mode but it's kind of like a little bit annoying um, but bearing in mind um, this is an Android device you've got some options within the settings uh, within the camera um, about the um, power down um, time so you've got a shutdown timer so when it actually turns itself off so maybe that you actually do kind of leave it on uh, in sort of like a standby mode you just uh, sort of lock the screen and, and have done with it kind of thing um, so that's a, a quick look at some of those options there of course you can share all of this content from the camera um, it's an innovative device uh, I don't think so far our initial impressions are that great it's quite pocketable and portable uh, the downsides are the lack of SDXC support uh, the fairly small battery the battery life isn't great so far uh, the Android version it could be improved there could be some more features and some more applications installed as standard but we've got to give credit to uh, Nikon here it's kind of pushing the boundaries it's what more and more people want to see to be able to share their photos and the fact that you can do that through Facebook Twitter and loads of other applications directly from the handset sorry from the camera providing you've got um, a wireless connection it's a really interesting um, sort of development in the camera world we're really keen to see the Samsung Galaxy camera which we think will probably um, blow the socks off this Nikon but it, it's not bad but for the price point um, you could argue you'd be better off actually just getting a dedicated smartphone uh, with a good camera something like the Galaxy S3 there's not that much difference in price and you're gaining quite a bit more yes the images are probably fractionally better on this um, but it's all about striking a balance and if you're really into your, your, your photography uh, you're probably going to have a uh, sort of standalone camera option that you'd use um, when you wanted to but it's nice to see this convergence sort of taking place so be sure to check out our other videos on our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash clove technology and also check out a full review on the clove blog blog.clove.co.uk